We all know that God is a jealous God, right? But there's a big difference between jealousy and being envious, right? Jealousy and envy are two different animals. And here's a beautiful, very sweet, short, concise explanation that really hits home. And in the Old Testament, that God is a jealous God. He's jealous. If people do not understand what we believe, they would say, what a primitive God you follow. I want a primitive God, jealous? Why would you be jealous? They confuse the word jealous with envy. God is not envious, but he is jealous. I'm quite sure if your wife was to pay attention to, well, another gentleman, that you might feel jealous. Perhaps oh, I would, yes, 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 I would think so. Why? Because you're in love with her and you care for her and you feel that you have a right to have her devotion yeah. and her attention. God feels precisely the same way. For everyone watching right now, he loves them greatly, intensely. So he doesn't want them fraternizing with lesser spirits. And those lesser spirits, incidentally, are demonic. They're completely demonic. And they put on the facade of being a deceased loved one because they can assimilate these roles very, very okay, easily. I've never heard that before, mm. but that's the strategy, so to speak. Yes, yeah. Imagine that you were a demon out of body. And we know that demons exist. I mean, they, uh, at one point, Jesus is, is uh, requested by them to be sent into, into animals going off the edge of a cliff. They want embodiment. They don't have embodiment. They want it. So when you go and activate and work with a Ouija board or whatever, you're opening yourself up to that. Sometimes it involves what's called psychometry or automatic writing. Your body, our bodies, should not be accessible to demons. Yeah, but Norm, that's the Old Testament, right? Well, idolatry is the act of worshiping something or someone other than God. And there's lots of examples here in this modern day world. Modern day idols include like identity, placing your identity in something other than God, such as your work, your social following, or hobbies. If you put it before God, it becomes an, an idol. How about money? The pursuit of money, regardless of whether you have it or not. Being covetous, that's, money is, is an idol. Entertainment, being obsessed with being entertained, that's a form of idolatry. What about sex? The obsession with sex and culture, man. That's a huge idol, right? Comfort, valuing comfort, you know? It becomes such an idol that you forget about others. You put, you put yourself before others, right? Phones, placing too much importance on your phone, you know, always being inside of it instead of reading the Word of God. That's a form of idolatry. Power, worshiping power. Some people have, are just these, you know, they're like little Napoleons, you know, where, where they have, um, where they just want all this power. And power can become an idol very, very easily. Reputation, worshiping reputation, you know. Oh, I have the reputation of being, you know, the fastest guy in the quarter mile on my car, you know, out, out of all all the people in Miami. That's a form of idolatry. What about appearance? Worshipping appearance. Don't we see that a lot? That's a form of idolatry as well. That is why the devil is such a sneaky little bastard. This is part of my French. He's the father of all lies. He came to cheat, destroy, and kill. He's very subtle. He's very crafty, he's very cunning. And we have to pray constantly for discernment, for, for revelation, but above all, wisdom, wisdom. Remember King Solomon? He prayed to God and God said, whatever you want, just ask of me. And he said, well, the one thing I want the most is wisdom. And because he just asked for wisdom, God, God added everything else to him. 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added unto you. That is a trustworthy statement. Love you all.